as Mazda continues on with its upmarket trajectory, they're now releasing the second member of its premium rear-wheel drive SUVs. If you find the two-row CX-60 to be a bit too small for you, then this three-row and more luxurious CX-90 is probably what you're looking for. So this is the new Mazda CX-90 and as we've seen before in the CX-60, this large SUV utilizes the evolved Kodo design language. So the design of both vehicles are characterized by smooth surfaces and as you've probably noticed, a lack of character lines. So here in the CX-90, it's pretty much mirroring what you've seen in the CX-60, but basically bloated up to become a bigger and really large crossover full-size SUV na nga, in fact, sa totoo lang because of just how wide and long this car is. So, the CX-90 won't be replacing the CX-9 in the Philippines, but in some markets, like in North America, this would replace the CX-9 as their flagship model now for North America. But in the Philippines, it would complement the CX-9. Anyhow, as you can see, there are two variants here on our disposal right now. So, you have this all-wheel drive model and then the all-wheel drive exclusive on my left painted in this lovely artisan red while this one is painted in a lovely shade of rhodium white. Both are equally gorgeous paints. So in terms of the exterior differences, as you're gonna see, the all-wheel drive gets black body cladding while the all-wheel drive exclusive gets painted body cladding. Their front end treatments are pretty similar. So you have this five-point Mazda grill, the typical grill that you've seen in a lot of Mazdas nowadays. You also have LED headlights with the DRL, so daytime running lights, bisecting the grill or at least like cutting through the grill, just like in the CX-60. Both also have 20-inch wheels, and in terms of equipment, actually, in terms of exterior features, they're pretty much similar. Iba lang yung kanilang treatment, of course, with the exclusive being catering more on the premium and luxurious side of things. So, 20-inch wheels in a diamond-cut finish in the exclusive, while in the all-wheel drive standard model, they're painted in silver. And then, moving down the sides, you're gonna see that there's a chrome trim running through the car's rocker panels with the Mazda emblem or Mazda script rather engraved through the silver trim. Both also have a chrome detailing sa kanyang window line and also satin silver roof rails on both models and also an upright roof line to indicate of course that this car has a third row na compared to the CX-60. Also worth noting I think is the fender, four fender vents rather on the both CX-90 models. Yun nga lang here in the all-wheel drive, the standard model, uh, it's finished in matte black, which uh, medyo, I think, a bit off or a bit cheap compared to the chrome version that you find in the all-wheel drive exclusive. But yeah, uh, moving towards the back, they're pretty much similar in terms of design flourishes. They both have chrome detailing sa kanilang rear bumper, but of course, in this white car, it's nga, painted in matte black, or rather finished in matte black, while the other one is body painted. But basically, in terms of aesthetics, the the standard all-wheel drive model sort of looks more rugged compared to the sleeker, more on-road-ish looks of the all-wheel drive exclusive. Also worth noting, by the way, the CX-60 has those four tailpipes or like four exhaust treatment. Pero here in the CX-90, there are actually no none or at least none of that treatment that you would see in the rear bumper of the CX-90. So I guess it looks cleaner and less pretentious, I guess, in terms of the exhaust finish. But anyway, yeah, in terms of Exterior features, the two cars are pretty similar. Yun nga lang, there are differences lang in aesthetics, but they're pretty similar in terms of the features, like yun nga yung mga power tailgate and all those stuff. So yeah, I think it's a good time for us na to move inside the new Mazda CX-90. So now that we're here inside the new Mazda CX-90, and as you're gonna see in terms of the overall aesthetic, it's pretty similar to what you would find in that CX-60. So, as usual with every Mazda at this price point now, or actually sa totoo lang, every Mazda naman in general, except for the PT-50 probably, um, the interior is punching above its price point. It's so luxurious. So speaking of pricing, it's pretty competitive relative to cars like the Hyundai Palisade, the Subaru Evoltis, and probably the upcoming Toyota Land Cruiser Prado or what is now called the Land Cruiser 250. There's plenty of soft touch materials on the dash. There's suede here on the dashboard and door panels as well. At least in this particular all-wheel drive exclusive model. So in the all-wheel drive, the standard all-wheel drive, it gets predominantly black leather sa interior. 
So here, as you're gonna see nga, yung kanang materials or rather the upholstery is a mix of suede, Legano suede rather in Mazda's terms, along with brown Napa leather. Pero in the other car, the all-wheel drive standard mode, it's still Napa leather, but yung nga, of course, it's in black. So in terms of interior trim saman, here in the all-wheel drive exclusive, you get graphite with gunmetal accents, while in the other model, you get silver or like aluminum trims with silver accents. And then, a standard on all variants, you have a digital instrument cluster along with a large infotainment screen which measures 12.3 inches. So, this is the latest version of the Mazda Connect infotainment system. It's very easy to use with the rotary knob controller. Lagi yung sasabi naman sa to na sa mga reviews ko, I prefer the rotary knob controller layout na infotainment systems compared to purely touchscreens because yun nga, you have muscle memory dictating your actions. So, parang kahit nakatingin ka lang sa road. So, alam ko na in a few clicks, you're in communication or you're in navigation or you're gonna be in Apple CarPlay. Basically, this is why I prefer knobs over touchscreens, especially once you get to own these cars long term. Then, yun nga, you have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, which is wireless, by the way, for Apple CarPlay. And, of course, you have a lovely sounding Bose surround sound system. And as typical with Mazda, yun nga, their climate controls and other vehicle functions are still via physical controls. So, hindi ka mga ngamba pagdating sa climate controls. So, wala akong rant ngayon, basically, with the climate controls being buried into the touchscreen. Kasi yun nga, you don't have a touchscreen with this car. And then, apart from these screens and the physical controls, you also have a large 10.4-inch head-up display. And apart from that, other features worth talking about, I think, is the panoramic glass roof, which is standard across those two variants. And ventilated front seats which are very useful of course sa ating hot climate as you're gonna see din pala by the way what's also gonna be separating these two variants are the city configurations because this is the all-wheel drive exclusive what you get is a six-seater layout but in the other model what you get is a eight-seater layout so I think that's a good time for us to move to the back seats of the Mazda CX-90 so now that we're here at the back of the CX-90 and as you're gonna see this seat, by the way, the front seat, has been set for my driving position but not through the driver personalization system which will set your driving position based on what dimensions you've inputted sa kanyang infotainment system. Since I find that feature to be hit and miss in the CX-60 as you've seen in my first impressions video of that car. But anyway, yes, for Mazda, driving positions are they're really spot on once you've adjusted it manually uh, to your preferences, basically. So yeah, with this seat in my position, this considers a tall 5'11 driver. So here, as you're gonna see, another 5'11 dude is sitting at the back of the CX-90. And there's a good amount of headroom despite this panoramic sunroof. Legroom is really excellent, by the way. And in terms of width, this can genuinely carry the adults. Being the all-wheel drive exclusive, what you have are two captain's chairs with a permanent center console in the middle. So you have stuff here for amenities and storage. You also have subtle ambient lighting just like in the front, which is in white, not the RGB thing that you would normally see in German rivals. And then, as for amenities, you have your rear sun chains, which is always a good thing at a car at this price point. Then, your own climate zone. So, this is a three-zone climate control vehicle. You have two USB-C charging ports here at the back. And then, at the third row, in terms of amenities, you also have two USB-C charging ports, one on each side. So, basically, ang ibig sabihin nun is both rear passengers get to enjoy charging for their smartphones or whatever device they want to charge. This second row can slide forward and backward, of course. And even if I slide this a bit forward, I still have a good amount of legroom so that I could give those third row passengers more legroom. This is, by the way, a very long cart, around 5.2 meters long. So it would be interesting what the third row would be like in terms of legroom and headroom once we talk about the third row. And I think it's a good time na for us to move to the third row but not for this variant, I'm gonna be jumping into the other CX-90 because yung third row itong all-wheel drive exclusive is meant to sit two people lang. Pero kasi, in terms of width, yung third row nito is the same lang with the CX-90 all-wheel drive the standard model. But that's uh, quoted to sit three people. So it's gonna be interesting in terms of space, how the third row that's meant for three people will be like in terms of space. So now we're going to be hopping into the back seats or the third row of the CX-90 all-wheel drive, the third row that's meant for three people. So to enter the third row, just have to press a button here. So I can the second row and then slide this seat forward. 
Then entering the third row is actually pretty easy because the opening is quite wide. Let's close the door. And yeah, as you can see, in terms of... Wait, of course, uh, we have it. Move this seat. So what it's max setting, kanyang pinaka atras na configuration, I really don't have much in terms of legroom. But surprisingly, I have foot room. I'm able to put my feet under the second row, which is surprising. And then, yun nga, as mentioned, this is a very long car, around 5.2 meters long. So if you ask nicely to the second row passengers, they can, of course, move the seat forward. As you've seen nga kanina, there's plenty of space even if I've moved the seat a bit forward to accommodate those in the third row. So let's do that. And tada! There's actually a generous amount of legroom na here in the third row. Headroom is konti lang but I do fit. The important part is I fit comfortably. Yun nga lang, these seats are very low for my preference but not PPV bad in terms of third row kasi uh, I think the seat height is taller naman here compared to what you would get in cars like the Tanto Sir Prado the previous gen at least at the new model that's coming out soon though I think the Palisade is better at carrying third row pa rin. but anyway as mentioned this is a third row that's meant to carry three people so uh, yeah uh, to be honest with you I don't think this is really meant to carry three people because yung sa all-wheel drive exclusive yung kanyang third row which is meant to carry two people ang sobrang luwag niya like as in hindi kayo agawan ng elbow room with the other passenger okay this can fit three people but probably a tiny person sa middle ng kanyang third row but yun nga for the best comfort the best space I think this is best left for two large adults and you'd be really comfortable here at the third row of the CX-90. Wala ka nga lang climate vents at the roof. Oddly enough, they're placed here at the sides. Ang important, it's pretty close to the third row occupants sa kanang climate vents. But yeah, anyhow, I think it's a good time for us at this point to move towards the trunk space of the Mazda CX-90. And then as for cargo space, the CX-90 offers a lot more room compared to the CX-9. Though it must be noted that opting for the six-seater version somewhat reduces the cargo space, which is probably due to the center console at the second row. But nevertheless, you only have one engine choice for the CX-90, and that's a 3.3-liter gas-fed turbocharged inline six that's made into a 48-volt mild hybrid system, which sends power to a rear-biased all-wheel drive system via a new Mazda-developed eight-speed automatic with a multi-plate clutch. As for safety, let's talk about safety na ngayon. So this is the CX-90, of course, the flagship of Mazda's range. And you pretty much expect that this car will be fully equipped with all the advanced safety features. And you're absolutely right in that prediction. So as expected, this car comes with a full suite of advanced driver assistance tech from the Mazda iActive Sense suite. So forward-facing camera here sa taas and a radar sa kanang front grille. And combined, these features include automatic emergency braking, front and rear by the way, lane departure warning, lane centering, adaptive cruise control na yun nga lang doesn't work in stop and go traffic and will deactivate at 30 km per hour. You also have blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alert, and a very nice 360 degree camera system. It's a pretty good system. Maganda yung kanyang 360 degree camera resolution. It's very sharp. Yun nga lang, I find the borders of the 360 camera to be old school at this point. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for the Mazda CX-90. What do you think about this car? It's a really nice, large, premium crossover SUV that's trying to basically compete with the likes of the Lexus RX, I guess, or entry-level versions of the BMW X5. Though, it's a bigger car, and with its rear-wheel drive architecture and inline 6, it's really trying to be above compared to brands like mga Toyota natin or mga Honda. But surprisingly, at a price man that's really competitive because this actually matches the price tags of the Hyundai Palisade and the Subaru Evoltis, among other mid-sized three-row premium SUVs. So yeah, as I mentioned here, are the prices and basically let us know in the comment section what do you think about the Mazda CX-90 and would you buy it compared to cars like the Evoltis, the Hyundai Palisade, the Toyota Land Cruiser Prado, the upcoming one at least, and other SUVs at this price point and category. And of course, as with every Mazda, this car comes with a 5 years worth of free maintenance. And 
that will also, of course, help you in terms of the car's long-term ownership costs. 